Here's another viewer question video. So over the past few days, I've received messages from several viewers, and there seems to be an, a renewed interest in my in one of my earlier propagations of jelly beans. A lot of time has passed since I since I plucked them, and if I recall correctly, I pulled them out towards the end of last winter or maybe somewhere early spring, and it's now nearing the end of summer. Well, it's we're one week away from the end of summer. And down here in Australia, March is the start of autumn, so the temperatures would start going down from then on. But in any case, the reason I bring up the season and the temperatures is that jelly beans go a bit dormant during summer, they grow slowly, but when it gets a bit cooler, not too cold mind you, spring and autumn is a perfect time for them to grow, so I guess why not? I could show you my I could show you the propagations. And just to satisfy the curiosity of several viewers who've been asking about it recently. The actual propagations in the tray that I laid out before, most of them I've already used in the landscape, so maybe a bit more than half. So maybe about there's only about a half of them remaining in the tray. And the rest are still still in the tray, of course. Actually, let me just show you. So here's the tray. It's a bit of a mess right now because I've been pulling several sprouts and as you can see there are a bunch of new leaves and a stump and even a flower stalk to the right. That's because I've made a lot of space after moving out some of the pups. This ones at the top are the regular jelly beans. These are the normal types which has the usual amount of chlorophyll and when they go bigger they would look something like this. And down here at the bottom, these are what we call Aurora. These are the versions that have less chlorophyll compared to the normal ones. And if you look closely, some of them are starting to variegate. Because if you as you can see, some of the some of the pups, some of the leaves on the pups are starting to revert to the normal green. So they're not purely they're not purely pale. And earlier, I kept mentioning that I've been using them in the landscape. And as you know, I recently worked on this arc, and this is where they ended up in. So with jelly beans and seedlings in general, I prefer taking cuttings rather than trying to grow them from leaves because this, this method is a lot faster than growing from leaves. And from my experience, there's a tendency for the aurora to revert as you've seen just now when you propagate them from leaves. I'm not sure if that's always the case but in my, my experience that, that's, what keeps, that's what keeps happening. And depending on what type of collector you are, this might be desirable or otherwise. In my case, this is annoying because the reason why I propagate is I want to get an exact copy of them. As you've seen just now in the arc, I'm trying to fill up, trying to fill up a section with jelly beans, and the ones in the middle would be the, the regular green ones, and surrounding it would be the aurora. I want there to be a distinct contrast between the two groups, so I want them to be as pure as possible. I don't want them to be variegated. But of course, if I were to put them in a separate pot, but in any case, again. I do landscapes and I want I want patterns, I want colors, I want consistency, so cuttings is the way to go for me. So keep your questions coming and I'll see you in the next video.